Hi, uh, so our next speaker has years of experience in mobile and embedded platforms. And as, as an open source contributor, he contributes to, to the Tizen operating system. So please welcome Pavel. Hello, everyone. Uh, I work for uh, Samsung Research and Development Institute in Poland. And I am currently a member of uh, Tizen release engineering team. Uh, Tizen is an operating system aimed at uh, embedded devices and, as you might imagine, uh, releases of uh, such an operating system require a lot of verification, validation, and in order to stay efficient with our daily tasks, we try to automate as much as possible of uh, our job. That's why we came uh, with the mm, new design for MaxPy boards, you can see here. And that's what I would like to share with you today. I will start with a short introduction to what I will be talking about. Uh, and then I will summarize and describe in short previous efforts uh, in this topic. Next, I will uh, share with you our idea for uh, automation of testing and other quality assurance related tasks on embedded devices and show you what hardware and software we use uh, for uh, these uh, tasks. I will also share with you our plans for the future and uh, mm, summarize it uh, with a short uh, conclusion. We should, have, uh, we should still be able to do some uh, Q&A after that. So first, what uh, Tizen is. Uh, Tizen is a, a GNU Linux distribution aimed at uh, embedded devices and it uh, uses uh, standard uh, components such as uh, GNU compiler, collection, toolchain, uh, Linux kernel obviously, Wayland uh, as the uh, display server and uh, Enlightenment Foundation libraries as main graphics uh, library. Uh, it runs on a wide range of devices uh, starting with uh, mobile phones, uh, wearables, uh, but also TVs, uh, fridges, cold uh, family hubs, and uh, since uh, last year also on uh, IoT devices. But before uh, Tizen goes uh, to product, to those uh, as uh, to, as product to those platforms, uh, a platform has to be developed, and it is uh, developed in uh, various. Uh, Samsung R&D institutes all over the world, uh, in the USA, India, uh, South Korea, and Poland as well. So uh, in order to stay efficient with development of this uh, operating system, uh, we have to release uh, early and release often. But by no means this should affect quality of the software uh, that we release. Uh, that's why release engineers like me, uh, have to check all of uh, new changes that uh, are to be pulled uh, to next release uh, prior uh, their actual publishing. Uh, that's when we uh, verify whether there are no regressions uh, in the software that we are to publish, uh, and that's uh, the actual QA step for Tizen uh, platform binaries. Uh, even though uh, most of the packages uh, that Tizen consists of come with some internal tests that we always run on. These are not enough. Uh, we have to uh, put the uh, platform already built platform binaries on the actual hardware in order uh, to verify that uh, no developer device will be harmed by some update or uh, new software that we will publish. But some of the devices that we uh, publish our platform binary images um, are not easily obtained, uh, especially when they are not uh, on the market yet. That's why we thought that it would be much easier to just uh, grant an access to such devices uh, instead of uh, giving them away uh, to developers. Uh, with remote accessibility, to uh, those devices, it would be much safer uh, for high security target devices and possibly uh, no security leaks prior their 
going to market. Uh, it would also be much easier for developers since they would not have to uh, set the whole development environment by themselves uh, and uh, devices would no longer be stored aimlessly in lockers once developers uh, go home uh, after a day of work and instead they could be uh, shared uh, in different time zones uh, not only by developers in South Korea, but also in Poland on, or in USA, since there are uh, almost um, eight hour uh, difference in time zones. That's why we uh, came with uh, our design, which is uh, an extension board that provides an abstraction layer over the target device that we publish Tizen images on. Uh, to communicate with the uh, outside world, it actually requires only uh, two interfaces. A network interface over the Ethernet to the uh, NanoPi Neo board and the power supply. Uh, after that, uh, any device under test that is connected to a MaxPi board can be uh, accessed remotely almost instantly. This is one of the uh, main features for MaxPy, and this is why it scales so easily, because uh, the only thing that limits you is uh, throughput of your network. So if you need uh, more of uh, devices on your um, testing farm, as we call it, uh, you only have to provide uh, power supply and network connection to them, and it doesn't matter whether uh, the device under test is Raspberry Pi uh, or some other ARM V7 based uh, uh, boards such as Odroid or even mobile phone uh, like uh, Note 4 uh, on the right hand side. So now as you know what uh, I will be sharing with you today, let's start with description uh, why we actually did this. One of the most popular solutions uh, for uh, embedded Linux testing uh, and most widely known uh, is probably Linaro Automated Validation Architecture developed by Linaro, uh, which uh, allows automation of uh, deployment of operating system images uh, onto embedded devices. It supports not only physical devices, but also virtual ones and uh, allows you to run a wide range of uh, tests from boot and bootloader tests up to system level, although they might require some additional hardware uh, in order to be run properly. Uh, Lava is used by various projects such as uh, Android, uh, Yocto, uh, De uh, Debian, uh, Fedora, uh, or some specific embed uh, some uh, embedded specific Linux distributions such as uh, automotive grade Linux but for our use case uh, it did not provide us with an easy way to have a direct and interactive access to device under tests. Although there is a mechanism in linear automated validation architecture uh, for that requirement called hacking session uh, there were some issues that we were unable uh, to um, go through and use this solution. However, uh, it uh, fulfills other requirements for others and one of the most widely known uh, projects will probably be the kernel CI with uh, already uh, over five, uh, sorry, four million boots uh, to test the uh, Linux uh, kernel. As for the hardware approaches for, uh, uh, for embedded Linux testing, Linaro uh, also came up with uh, LMPs boards, which primarily were used to verify uh, the ability of hot plugging various devices, whether there were uh, HDMI uh, devices, uh, SATA drives, uh, some storage devices uh, like uh, micro uh, SD cards uh, and so on. And those uh, LMP boards were also used to provide uh, mm, better control 
uh, over the devices under tests uh, in quality assurance tasks. Uh, the lessons learned from LMPs were published uh, in the link down below. Uh, and around 2015 and 16, uh, at Samsung, we decided that we will try again with this approach for having uh, shared storage uh, between the test server and uh, device under tests. That's when we came up with uh, SD Max board, which is uh, uh, which precedes uh, Max uh, Pi board, and has been used at Samsung for quite some time. Uh, it uh, allows you to control the power supply to the board. Uh, it uh, allows you demultiplexing access to the storage device, which is micro SD card in this case, uh, and uh, has been uh, used not only at Samsung, but also at uh, resin.io. Uh, it uh, also has helped uh, at uh, Nokia, uh, Qt, and uh, Ableton. Uh, some of those companies uh, forked our project uh, since it's completely uh, open source and open hardware and uh, can be reused uh, with uh, uh, and can be easily reused since only open source tools uh, were used to develop it. Uh, some of them uh, made their own versions like resin.io uh, who, uh, whose uh, engineers came up with AutoHUD board which uh, fixed a few uh, issues in the SDMAX and added some user interface to that board. But uh, as uh, the longer you use uh, USB subsystem uh, in your test server, the, the higher possibility there is for you to get the protocol errors from kernel. And that's uh, what uh, happened to us and that's what uh, gave us the biggest headache since we uh, had for uh, since we had uh, a few test ser servers in our farm that were unusable after a few months of uh, uh, constant use that's when we decided that we need to take a step back go back to drawing board and uh, came up with a new idea for uh, a solution to uh, assure the quality of uh, operating system on embedded devices. We already knew that there are some constraints that we uh, have to uh, limit ourselves while designing such a solution. For example, only replaceable media might be used, uh, but there, uh, it already has been implemented in SDMAX board and uh, it uh, is still in available in MaxPy. We also didn't want uh, a single point of failure, such as a USB subsystem in Linux kernel on a single test server uh, per multiple uh, device under tests. And as I mentioned, we didn't want any USB involvement from test server. Uh, we also wanted to keep everything simple and have a unified way of uh, accessing uh, our devices. That's why we decided for minimum external connections and uh, as I said, only two are required, network access and power supply. Uh, and we wanted it to be easily uh, maintainable uh, since we already knew that we were the ones that would have to set up and maintain such board farms. Since we were already back at the drawing board, we decided that the features that were often requested by SDMAX users, such as uh, user interface or power measurement hardware, could also be useful in a new design. Uh, also, uh, since some of the target boards that are used to test uh, Tizen um, do not work properly, if they are not connected to an actual display, we decided that uh, possibility of just writing the EDID information to that devices, to 
to let them know uh, that they uh, should be able to detect a display attached could be useful. That's when we came up with uh, MaxPy board. And let me go through uh, its architecture uh, on the uh, uh, diagram. Uh, as I mentioned a couple of times, only the Ethernet and the power supply barrel are the interfaces to the outside world. Uh, we started the design with the good old uh, SD Max and the uh, power supply controller for being able to complete, do a complete power cycle of device under test in case uh, it is uh, in an unusable state and has to be uh, rebooted uh, forcefully with just disconnecting the power from it. Uh, we also added the UI for ease of use of board farm uh, maintainer uh, and uh, added some uh, power measurement hardware in order uh, to be able to, uh, to verify whether new software uh, consumes more power or, uh, or maybe it, uh, it makes the power consumption uh, better in the next releases. We also uh, use uh, multiple supervisor hardware, such as this NanoPi Neo uh, SBC, single board computer, for uh, the logic behind the abstraction layer over the uh, device under test, Raspberry Pi 3 in this case, and also a microcontroller for some uh, low level uh, features of uh, MaxPi board. And next, we also have multiple uh, interfaces to the device under test itself. Uh, it's uh, not only some standard uh, interfaces like Ethernet, uh, USB, uh, or even 5-pin USB with an ID pin for uh, controlling uh, mobile and wearable uh, targets, but also uh, serial console over UART for uh, fine-grained uh, fine access, and also dynamic jumpers uh, in case there is a need uh, to uh, mock pushing buttons or uh, enabling some jumpers on your device under test. Some of the devices that we use, for example, Arctic boards uh, produced by Samsung, uh, do require being able to push some buttons remotely. Uh, there's also an HDMI uh, interface, but please keep in mind, it's only for writing EDID information. Uh, and since we knew that not all of the uh, required uh, functionality can be de declared up front, uh, we also made room for some additional boards on the MaxPy. This is how we uh, got uh, our shared storage, a microSD card that can be switched between the device under test uh, for, for running some operating system on it and for uh, being able to rewrite it completely from the test server which is NanoPi board in our case. We are also available to do a complete power cycle in case uh, device under test is un in unusable state. And also we uh, now may uh, mock pushing devices remotely. So there's no need for a physical access to the uh, device under test. We are also able to measure the power consumption, write EDID, and provide various connections to the uh, target devices, as well as being able to interact uh, with uh, those uh, setups by a uh, board farm maintainer. And uh, board farm maintainer actually has a couple of interfaces uh, for uh, getting some information on device under test state. Uh, starting with some simple ones like uh, the uh, power LED or uh, SD reader activity LED, uh, going through uh, the RGB LEDs for indicating the MaxPi board state, uh, a few buttons, a couple of buttons uh, for uh, some quick actions and an OLED display uh, for being able to maintain 
such a board form in an easy way and get some quick information directly for MaxPy boards. I mentioned that we required uh, MaxPy to be extensible from start and it, uh, it is uh, achieved by providing uh, the uh, expansion boards uh, such as this one onto the uh, connectors from the MaxPy board. This way we finally got an independent solution for uh, any device under test which provides us with uh, an abstraction layer over uh, the target uh, and it's aware of its state and is easy to maintain as well as extensible from start. If you would require uh, such an abstraction layer over your devices under tests uh, for your daily tasks, you would have to start with a NanoPi Neo single board computer which uh, costs around 10 bucks. Then you would need uh, about uh, 80 bucks for the parts for the MaxPy board, but also high soldering skills and a lot of patience. Uh, but if you are still interested and not afraid, uh, go ahead to our uh, GitHub in a Samsung Slav uh, uh, organization. There is a MaxPy repository which contains all of the uh, schematics for the MaxPy board uh, to be able to build it, as well as uh, some accompanying software to interact with uh, MaxPy board. But it does not contain all of the software that we use uh, to uh, test our platform binary images with MaxPy boards. The other uh, software was designed uh, to follow the Unix philosophy of doing one thing, but doing it well. Uh, so it is uh, strongly decoupled and it uh, communicates uh, between uh, the communication between all of those layers uh, is uh, made through the RESTful HTTP APIs. Mm. We also wanted to uh, stay uh, with a single uh, toolset for the whole stack and since it's uh, a set of uh, backend applications, uh, the Go language was used for every layer. How did we uh, divide the responsibilities? in the board farm, uh, we asked ourselves what they actually are uh, and uh, gave uh, uh, the answer by uh, layer by layer. So uh, who knows uh, what requires verification, uh, which means uh, detection of new platform binary images that require quality assurance tasks and this is our test manager called Perun. Uh, all of those names that uh, I'll show you in uh, short uh, come from uh, Slavic legends. Perun, uh, as you might know, uh, is uh, one of the main characters uh, in Slavic legends. Uh, and that's why uh, he was chosen for the top layer uh, in our stack. Uh, as for the run manager, or the actions that are necessary to be taken. That's the job for Veles, and Veles in uh, Slavic Legends is the master of the underworld. So that's why he was chosen. But as for the uh, answering the question of uh, who knows where uh, can such actions be run, uh, this is the job for Boruta, and Boruta is a character uh, from Slavic Legends who takes care of uh, forests and all living creatures in forests. And finally, as to uh, how to actually uh, perform those actions, we've got uh, MaxPy-based uh, dryads, and dryads are uh, friendly beings uh, living in forests taken care by Boruta. So let's start uh, describing all of those layers from the bottom up. So let's start with uh, our form farm uh, based on uh, dryads. Uh, dryads, which are sets of uh, MaxPy boards with device under test, uh, 
are uh, designed to manage only a single device under tests. That's the requirements, uh, that's the requirement for uh, no single point of failure uh, I mentioned earlier. So if there is uh, an issue with a test server, in our case, NanoPy uh, Neo uh, board, only a single device under test is affected and no uh, other device under test. So, uh, for example, protocol error from uh, USB subsystem of Linux kernel will not uh, cause any damage to other uh, devices under test that are connected to your test server, just the single one. And it can be easily uh, rebooted in order uh, to, to get in working state again. Uh, as I mentioned, Dryad is also fully aware of its capabilities. Whether uh, the, the board uh, has uh, ether Ethernet connection, whether there is uh, serial connection available from test server to the device under test. And uh, as I mentioned a couple of times, only two interfaces are required to be able to get access to it. Uh, as for the software that accompanies uh, MaxPice uh, and are used for dryads in our setups uh, and can be found in the uh, MaxPy repository, there's uh, Fota or Flash over the air for being able to write uh, platform binary images uh, to uh, storage devices uh, with uh, little overhead for, uh, for storage on the MaxPy board. And there's also the STM tool uh, for uh, switching off and switching back on target device. Uh, over multiple dryads, uh, there is uh, Boruta, our board farm manager, uh, who schedules access requests uh, to uh, those devices. When uh, you need to access specific device under test, you just create an, a request uh, to Boruta, which can also be delayed. For example, uh, if you plan to uh, work on um, some specific device, but not yet, uh, instead tomorrow morning, uh, you may ask to, to be um, assigned such a device on the next day. Uh, it also uh, allows us to postpone uh, some uh, CI uh, jobs uh, when the devices are not needed for an interactive use and can be uh, used for uh, just for some additional testing or performance testing uh, and so on. Uh, Boruta provides us with uh, convenient access to the selected uh, dryad based on its capabilities. So how does it look like? Uh, every dryad uh, registers in uh, Boruta Board Farm Manager and starts in maintenance mode. Uh, once uh, a Board Farm Maintainer uh, decides that it's ready to be used, uh, it is moved to an unallocated or idle state. Uh, if it matches requirements from a request that was sent to Boruta, then the environment uh, for uh, getting access to device under test managed by a given dryad uh, is prepared. A secure tunnel for communication is being set up and then the actual actions on the device under test might be performed. And how does it uh, actually look like? What are the use cases? A single Boruta server uh, or board farm manager manages multiple devices under test which are uh, hidden uh, under the abstraction layer of the MaxPy boards. And uh, no matter uh, who uh, requests an access, uh, if it uh, mm, can be fulfilled, uh, a suitable dryad will be uh, obtained by requesting party. So uh, based on given capabilities, MaxPy will be uh, assigned. But uh, that's uh, not the uh, only layer uh, that is available in our software stack. Uh, there's also Veles I mentioned earlier, 
which is a lightweight testing framework and provides a Lava-like interface with uh, YAML-based job definitions, which are then translated into actual actions that are uh, run on a selected device under test and can be grouped into uh, following, uh, following groups of uh, um, tasks, like deployment of uh, binary images, uh, um, booting the device under test, or ra actually running tests and collecting uh, results. And as you might or already have guessed, uh, it's the um, automation uh, layer for the um, performed action step from the previous uh, diagram. So uh, what VLS actually does is parsing the uh, description of, uh, of a job in a Lava-like uh, YAML format, then collecting all of the assets that are required for the given job, requesting device under test from Boruta, and then performing tests. And uh, our use cases uh, are, uh, are to uh, be able to uh, use uh, dryads from a uh, Boruta server by actually any VLS server. And let's focus on just a simple case when there is a single Boruta server and single VLS server. And uh, once the jobs in YAML format are sent to the VLS, VLS takes care of everything else. Everything else is hidden uh, from uh, the user behind an abstraction layer. And the user uh, does not have to worry about anything else from the lower layers. Over the VLS, there is also a test manager, or Perun, which uh, actually performs the operating system uh, images testing and uh, schedules verification of uh, new ones prior to their publishing and actually automates the uh, quality assurance steps of release engineering duties, or RED for short. Uh, it crawls all the URLs uh, that uh, pre-released uh, images are published on, then reports changes, submits VLS jobs, uh, collects the results, and interprets them so that we uh, know whether there were some regressions or whether the new platform binary images are fine. And just uh, as uh, in Boruta case, there might be multiple uh, parent servers uh, submitting jobs to just a single VLS server. Uh, for example, uh, for uh, monitoring various uh, mm, publishing sites of the platform uh, binary images. And with uh, those four layers, uh, we've got ourselves a Slav stack, which is short for a Slav Laboratory for Automated Verification. Uh, we wanted to keep it simple, and we wanted to keep it uh, decoupled. So if you just want an abstraction layer over your device under test, go ahead to our MaxPy repo on GitHub, uh, download the schematics and build your own MaxPy. Then you'll have the abstraction layer over the hardware. If you have many devices uh, and you already have your own solution for the abstraction layer over uh, your hardware, maybe Boruta uh, or Board Farm Manager might be of use to you. Uh, or maybe you already have your own testing framework, but not yet a board farm management system. Uh, then you can use our Boruta and MaxPy and uh, replace VLS with some uh, other software. Or maybe you decide that uh, each of those layers requires uh, rewriting from ground up and decide to re-implement uh, all of them. All of this is fine as long as the uh, HTTP API uh, calls are uh, fulfilled and uh, the uh, communication between all those layers uh, can stay the same. Uh, as for our plans for the future, on the hardware side, uh, we uh, will probably uh, prepare some proof of concept 
for uh, audio input and output in order to be able uh, to verify uh, voice assistance. Uh, we also intend to investigate the possibility of uh, adding an extension board for USB-C since uh, more and more uh, embedded uh, target devices are equipped with that uh, connection. And we also uh, will probably have uh, an direct serial console to the test server, NanoPi Neo, on the MaxPi board uh, for some debugging. For um, software point of view, uh, we intend to provide uh, web interfaces for uh, all of the uh, current layers. Uh, since the tools that we uh, currently use are CLI based and uh, since uh, all of uh, that is uh, available uh, via HTTP APIs, it is uh, really uh, easy to provide some additional clients for that uh, API. We also want to provide uh, service state management uh, and uh, will probably uh, investigate possibility of adding new uh, layers, uh, automating our daily tasks even more. Uh, if you would be interested uh, in uh, more details on MaxPy boards or uh, lessons that we learned from using SD Maxis, all of them are available at uh, tizen.org uh, wiki pages. And uh, if you would like to uh, get familiar with uh, Slav project, uh, go ahead to our uh, organization on uh, github.com, uh, Samsung Slav, or drop us a line on a mailing list, uh, or um, take a flyer from uh, the uh, desk in front um, to get some more information. Uh, to summarize, uh, we finally got ourselves uh, a board farm which can be quickly uh, set up, uh, which is uh, relatively easy uh, to maintain, which has all of the responsibilities uh, divided uh, between hardware abstraction, board farm abstraction, runner abstraction, and actually quality assurance abstraction. And uh, all of that can be executed in parallel. And finally, we've got a unified environment, no matter uh, what device under test uh, actually is hidden behind the MaxPy board. And we've been pretty happy with that so far. Uh, if you have any questions, I will be uh, more than happy to answer them. Just raise your hand so I can give you the mic. Or. Uh, hi, Paolo. Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, we know each other, so I know that you have been working on other uh, systems in the past, testing systems. Can you do a brief comparison uh, about uh, about this? With, uh, for example, in the past you were using Clava. Can you do a little bit of a comparison? What what are the advantages? Uh, all right. So. Uh, the question was about uh, comparison with uh, other testing systems like Lava. And uh, Lava uh, is a monolithic approach at uh, testing laboratories. So it's, uh, uh, it's a kind of software that uh, you can uh, use it and uh, you have to um, be able uh, to live with uh, some and disadvantages that might be uh, hard for uh, your setup. Uh, so it is uh, either taking it all or uh, taking none of it. Uh, in Slav, you've got, uh, for now, four layers from which you can decide which is useful to you uh, and uh, if you require some uh, extension to one of them, uh, you can only replace uh, a single one instead of uh, having to, uh, to modify the whole server. Uh, for now, uh, we try to maintain uh, at least some 
uh, level of compatibility with uh, other uh, servers for automated testing. And since Lava is the most popular, uh, that's why we adopted uh, its uh, YAML job definitions. So uh, the main change would be a division of responsibilities and not uh, having to uh, change the whole server if you need just a small requirement that is not uh, currently fulfilled by Lava. And the second big change is uh, being able to have an uh, easy access, easy direct access for interactive use with uh, devices under tests, which is kind of possible in Lava, but uh, for us it uh, wasn't quite enough since we also do bootloader level tests, which are not uh, supported uh, by Lava uh, for now. All right, so if there are any uh, more questions, um, raise an issue on GitHub, drop us a line on mailing list, or uh, contact me directly uh, on my uh, email address. Uh, thanks for your attention.